Um, I think we can get started. And um, it's about a dozen people here. So it's a small audience. And I guess um, we can customize the talk to what you all expect. So, um, so before we start, I want to ask everyone if they have come um, with some specific theming question in mind that they would like to get answered um, in any case. So anyone? Like, do you have a project that's going on and you want to customize your uh, home page or a particular page and you're wondering if coding would help you? You want a different home page? All right. Um, uh, anyone else? Anything specific? Because I don't know. Um, I, I'm curious about multi-level menus. Multi-level menus. You're interested in creating menus in multiple levels? Yeah, it's just it seems that's possible. Um, okay, so it is a little advanced, so I'll make a start and we'll discuss it maybe later. Um, anyone else? Um, any specific um, thing that you guys want to do with your page that you're hoping this session might answer? All right. Uh, how many of you are comfortable with PHP coding? OK. Um, so how many of you are not comfortable with PHP? Awesome. So the very first few minutes are for the people who are not comfortable with PHP. I'm going to describe how easy it is to do some PHP stuff. And we will tackle home page right after that. So today's, um, so we have already done asking the audience anything specific they would like. We have got two lists, two items in the list. I'm going to do intro to PHP. After that, um, we'll build a home page using only blocks. And uh, following that, what I have is I'm going to build a, a site that looks like another site that we find on the website, and then show how we can use the Zen theme uh, or, you know, the Zen as the main theme and create your own uh, sub theme, custom sub theme. So that would be a useful thing. And we'll finish with, you know, making a small review of Forms API. And this is a website that I developed, Pop Quiz Wiz site. So I will give a small demo. And uh, if you guys like anything, in that site that you would like to know how I develop, uh, I would be glad to answer. And for those of you who already know PHP, you're welcome to browse popquizbiz.com site. And in case you find something useful or interesting that you want to ask questions about, uh, you could make note of it and ask me later. So let's get started. So we are in covering the basics, introduction to PHP. So what I have is a small video. And in this video, if it opens up, What I want to demonstrate is that if you know an HTML file, uh, then you can create your own PHP file. And the principle is that anything, outs um, yeah, anything outside the PHP block um, is HTML. So let's get started. I'm opening um, 
notepad and in that I typed in some HTML text. That HTML text I'm storing as HTML file.html and we will see this HTML file in in a browser. So it's a very you know fairly straightforward HTML file. So so far we have not got into PHP. Right? And this is the source of HTML file. And what we are going to do is create this HTML file using PHP. So far, everyone with me? So what I did next is added uh, PHP open close tags on the top and at the bottom and renamed the file as .php instead of .html. And when I looked uh, in the browser, it looks like it's a PHP file. So anything outside the open PHP and close PHP tag is really HTML, and it just gets output like that. Uh, any questions on that? Yes. Good question. So, um, this the chalk. Thank you. So, your question is, we had some um, HTML. So, why did we not do this? And why did we do? You know, we closed it immediately, and we opened. So if it is within PHP, it is PHP code, and it's a different language. PHP is a different language from HTML. So even though it is one file, we are going between two different languages. One is HTML, another is PHP. So we wanted HTML output, but we wanted the whole file to be a PHP file. So if you close PHP tag, then whatever outside is, is HTML. And then um, I just added some empty PHP tag at the end. It was not really necessary. Um, does that answer? OK. The other thing I wanted to mention is we could have a lot of PHP code in a tag here, in the tag in the middle, and in a tag in the bottom. But all of that is. Uh, sort of one single code. So if you declare a variable here, it will be available in the middle. If you open an if clause, for instance, it will still be applicable in the middle. So this is just FYI. Just keep it in mind that all the tags um, are together. So if you have something in one block, it will be available in the later block. So I'm going to close this one, going back to the main. So just now we got comfortable with opening a PHP tag and closing a PHP tag and you know outputting some HTML in the middle. Next, uh, the most useful thing is a print variable statement in PHP. So we are going to do that now. So I'm editing the PHP file here. And in the middle, I open a PHP block. And then I'm going to close it. On top, I'm going to declare a PHP variable called header. 
and you declare it using dollar header equal to something that you want to output within string or within um, single or double quote. And what I'm trying to output is h1 a PHP file closing the h1 tag. So in the end, we will be develop we will have a PHP code that will output the title and the body. Um, that's what we are trying to do. So note that the header variable was declared in a PHP block on top, but that variable is available at a later point, and we are able to do print statement on that variable. So what just happened is we see two instances of a PHP file in this bold H1 tag. And I'm just going to clean up the opening of PHP tag and closing of it, put it in one line, and get rid of some um, H1 there, so that we have only one instance of a PHP file. So next. Um, you know, the content was shortly we are going to display this page in PHP. So that one string we are going to display, um, put it into a variable, and then do the same thing again. And just to give you a heads up, um, this is how, you know, all the modules populate the variables. So that's what happens in module part of Drupal. And in the theme part of Drupal, these variables get printed. Yeah, so we see that two lines have been printed now. And we just deleted the HTML output of it. So any questions so far? So now, the thing is, people who are new to PHP are afraid of editing PHP because what if something goes wrong and how to recover? So I want to make a mistake and see a white screen of death and then recover from that.
So I'm trying to add double quotes to PHP. When I do that, what I see is a blank screen. It means I wrote some PHP that that is something that you know it basically crashed it. So what do you do? Anyone? What can you do when you see white screen of death? Cry. All right. Turn on display errors. Sorry. Turn on display errors. What is display errors? It's a PHP directive. Okay. Um, Open up the error page in your web browser. Error page in web browser. What's the error page? In Firefox, it's Tools Error Console. No, All right. <laughs> Undo it. Yes, that's the thing. That's what I'm going to do just now. So be very careful when you're editing your PHP so that you can just undo it. You know, make a backup, make a copy, and then. So that is the best way if you can undo it. Oftentimes, we inherit some piece of code from somewhere, we don't even understand it, and it is already broken. So, so now, the other thing you could do is look at the Apache error log or your web server's error log. And then try to make a guess on you know, what caused the problem and try to fix it. So now, I'm just going to recreate the problem again. So we will see the white screen now. And then I'll open up the error log and go to the very bottom of it and see what the statement says. It says, PHP parse error in line number three. So that was line number three, dollar content statement. And the number one cause of white screen of death are these single quotes and double quotes. Take it from me. That's the first thing you have to look for. So, so these single quotes or double quotes are special characters. And PHP is thinking in that statement dollar variable equal to, you know, within the double quotes. If you want to put one more double quote in it, you have to escape it using a backslash character. So it is something that you just have to know. But as a rule of thumb, you know, the first thing you should look at is whether you have a single quote or a double quote in your statement somewhere. If that doesn't, um, if, it, if it's not something that simple, the other thing you can do is, and doing an undo, the, the, the other thing you do is comment out all your PHP and, and page and then start selectively on commenting until you find out what breaks the page. That's a good idea. Thank you. So now, um, the next thing we look at is if else in PHP. It is very important. Oftentimes, you want to print the title of the page only if the title exists. Otherwise, you don't want an empty h1 tag and a closing h1 tag. Or you, know, you don't want to say, hello, blank. You want it to be, hello, username. But if the username is blank, then you want the comma to appear one, you, know, you don't want a space to be there between comma and hello. So it's important to know how if else works in PHP. So the way we are going to see it is I have added another variable called another content and then one more variable called allowed. And allowed is a Boolean variable. It is either true or false. I set it to true to begin with. And I created some if else statements in PHP. It says if allowed, then print dollar content, else print another content. So what do you expect the output to be now? Same as before, right? 
That's what happened. I'm looking at the output, and it is the same as before. So I go back and change it to false. So what should the output be now? Something different. And we see that it is something different. So we are printing one variable or the other variable depending on the value of yet another variable. So far, everything makes sense. Any questions? All right. So the reason we spend all this time getting to know the simple basic PHP statements is that your theme consists of a few, you know, PHP pages like page.tpl.php, blog.tpl.php, and all of those are full of the simple if, else, and print variable statements in PHP. So if you know this much, you're comfortable looking at an error log, you're comfortable doing undo, then you're ready to go ahead and theme. So that's good. What I'll do now is take a look at block.tpl.php uh, file from the Garland theme. So how many of you know about Firebug? Good. So Firebug is the best thing you could do to yourself if you are doing any theme development. You will need uh, Firefox and Firebug. And what it does is lets you right click on anything, hit ins inspect element, and actually look at that element. So here we are looking at the bottom part. I mean, I guess I need to do this one more time to say what just happened. So what we did was, um, on the left side, um, there was this admin um, a navigation link. So I right-clicked on that and inspected the element. So it shows the word admin here. And that has h2 slash h2. We are looking at um, at the home page using the Garland theme. And this one is the block.tpl.php file of Garland. It is the shortest .tpl.php file, the block. And it's the easiest one to learn. And you can see. There's a, there's a PHP open and close tag, and slash slash is a comment. So whatever is in it, it is as if that does not exist. So there is something that is useful to know that slash slash is a comment. The other thing that's a comment is slash star, but it needs to be closed with star slash. So these two are comments in PHP. And what I wanted to demonstrate is div class equal to. So the div class equal to content is actually being uh, generated by this line here, div class equal to content. So it is what you would expect. And you can look at your favorite blog.tpl.php and compare it to the output it generates and sort of see what the variable values are and what the HTML is. The whole goal of theming is to generate these appropriate, the div, ID, you know, block, these sort of names. That's all you're trying to do when you're doing theming. Any questions? Have I lost everyone? It's simple. Cool.
So now we are going to create a front page using only blocks. And I'll get back to the tricks in a bit. So we are beginning with a brand new installation of Drupal 6. And you know, this is the thing that it shows, right? Welcome to your new Drupal website. And I'm going to have logged in as admin. So what I'm going to do is create a simple page. So create content. I'll open a page. Or rather, I'm going to create a block. I'm not going to create a page yet. Oh, creating a page. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, yes. I'm trying to create a page but not have any title. So, and I'm doing this because Drupal needs a page or a node or something to point to, to say that this is your home page. You cannot just have blocks and have them populate the front page, but not have any default front page. So, so I really want a blank home page, and then I'll put some blocks onto it. But creating a, um, a blank page is not possible. When I say save, I'm going to get an error that the title field is required. So I put in home page there and try to save it. Then it works. It has a title now, but no body. And the address is node slash one. So it is not yet a home page, it is just a page. We are going to make node slash one the home page by going to the administer you know, site settings menu. So now we have got a blank home page, but it has a title. So, so far, any questions? All right. So now I'm going to add some content to it by building a block. So I'm basically generating some content to put, to show in the home page. I also said that users cannot control whether they whether they can see this block. The other thing I have to do is make this block shown only on the front page, and the way to do that is click that middle radio button and show front. And I save the block. So at the end of it. Do you think it will show up in the home page? Yes, no. How many of you think it will show up in the home page? All right, you're all wrong, those who raised the hand. And why is that? Yes. And it really is very frustrating, you know, not knowing that you need to assign it to a new to some region. So that's what I'm going to do now.
Yes. It's hard to follow what's happening. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Hmm. What's happening? Yeah, I refreshed it and basically I got the output I wanted. There's a title, there's a body, but there's this bigger title called home page that I don't want. And I wanted just a block uh, to appear on my home page and not this extra title. You know, maybe the title can be in the banner itself. So, how to achieve that? So that's what we are trying to do. We are trying to get rid of that home page. So to do that, um, we are going to use two tricks. The first trick is that every single page in Drupal can be themed independently. and all you have to do is copy page.tpl.php to say page hyphen uh, the name of the page, uh, the page or the path to it. And if it is the front page that you're trying to do, it could be page hyphen front dot tpl dot php. And then the other trick we are going to use is we can delete um, statements of this type, you know, open PHP block, print variable, close PHP block. So those kind of things we can delete. And by trial and error, by deleting different such print statements, you can identify um, which ones you want to keep and which ones you want to let go of. It is safe to do that. So now we are looking at page.tpl.php file in the Garland directory. So this is, you know, vamp www Drupal Camp LA themes Garland folder. And in that garden folder, there are a lot of files. One of them happens to be page.tpl.php file. And we are going to open that up in an editor. So first we made a copy of it, called it page-front.tpl.php and then we removed one of the lines that had um, print statement in it. We saved it and then we are going to home page and refresh it and it's gone. So that's all I did. Any questions on what just happened? All right. So this whole thing worked, but we modified Garland theme. And, you know, sorry? Um, how, do I tell, how do I tell Drupal that the front page is now, oh, it just identifies that the front, it's, it holds the front page as the front page. What you've called identified as no, the node slash one so automatically pulls from that template file. Yes. <laughs> yes. So okay. any other? No. So basically all the you know TPL PHP files residing in the themes folder or theme garland or theme Minelli or whatever your theme is, um, they get scanned by Drupal and then it picks the appropriate one to to create the page. So this was modifying the, you know, the home page or customizing it, and that's all we are going to do with it now. So any questions on that? No. Yes. You said you create a sub theme, and is there naming for that? Is that what you said? Um, so we are going to create a sub theme of Zen in a bit. Okay. So 
that's what we're going to do next later on. But so far, what we have done is modified Garland theme directly. And, and like what she was saying about like the home-tmpl, that, like, say I create a new page, I want, like, a my, like, a, I guess, like, a page for books. And I, would I call it, like, books-tmpl? Um, so what is the path to that um, if it was, like, page? Slash if it is, if the URL for that is slash, like, node, node slash six, say, okay. then I believe I'll have to check on that. Um, but it would be similar to page hyphen and then you know some name, dot tpl dot php. So that will work, but I don't know exact name. I will look it up and get back to you on that. Okay, but a unique name does exist that you could. Um, that you could, you know, call that page. And that's the name I created when I created the page. Um, yes, as in you assign it a URL. Yeah. So that's the one. Okay, perfect. All right. Anything else? Do you know the answer, Ashok? To what? Um, so if there's a page whose URL is um, node slash six, and you just want to edit or you know modify that one page, what the um, file name for that would be? Would it be page hyphen node hyphen six? I believe that is correct. So you do specify the node ID, but the alias doesn't work. It wouldn't work. I don't think it works back. The alias is there. Do you need the node number? Yes. Yeah. You can't apply the node alias. Yeah. So like All right. either the number or the alias. Yeah. It's only, only the, the node, node ID. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if it is page, sorry, you know your site name slash node slash six, that's your page, then. The name of the file would be, um, you know, page hyphen yeah. node hyphen six dot tpl dot php. Great, thank you. Well, we have experts here who already know, so I'm getting help. Thank you. So. Next, what we're going to do is suppose you're browsing you know, internet and you come across a site that you like the look of and you want your Drupal site to have that look. How to do it, right? So obviously you're going to create your own theme. You're building a brand new custom theme and you're going to um, perhaps you know, edit the page.tpl.php and a few other PHP files. So now I'm going to show um, how to make your site uh, look like uh, this site that I like, which is Los Angeles Chess Club. So this site looks like this. It has so we are going to build a a theme, a new theme, which will have the chess background kind of things. So this is a site that I think okay, it has great graphics, and I want my site to look like this. So how do I go about doing it? That's what um, this next sort of uh, next set of um, videos are about. Okay. So the first step is to set up um, the basic platform so that you can start doing all this. And the way to do that is use Zen theme and then create your own sub theme out of the Zen theme. And um, so that's the basic steps you need to do. And I will show you how to do that. It's all very easy. You can just look up the readme files of Zen theme and everything is explained there. But I thought a video that explains or shows how it's actually done might be useful. So this is, we are beginning with the readme of Zen.
and it says that it has something called starter kit and we are supposed to copy the contents of the starter kit folder to uh, the sites all themes folder so what we are looking at is the zen folder which has been copied to you know vam www drupal camp la sites all themes zen and we see that there's a folder called starter kit we are going to copy that outside of the zen folder but into sites all themes folder and rename that to lhs because we want to build lhs theme So now we are looking at the LHS folder, which was the original starter kit folder. <coughs> it still has a few things called starter kit. For instance, there is starter kit dot info, and within you know the template PHP file and theme settings PHP file, there are also some instances of the word starter kit. We are going to rename those, but that's all we are going to do. Um, this is the readme of uh, starter kit and it gives you the few steps that you need to do so those are the steps that I had just mentioned renaming the um, starter kit to LHS and renaming the uh, template files to I mean the instances of starter kit to LHS So there was a function called starter kit something. We just renamed that in theme settings file. We're opening the template uh, .php file, and there I will do a global search replace for the word starter kit. So here I'm enabling the Zen theme, and the moment I enabled Zen theme, what happened was my home page my admin page everything started looking like it has no styles or anything so this is something you don't want to happen you want to be able to administer your site properly um, while you're developing your own theme so the way to do that is you have to reset your admin theme to be something different from default any questions no? Everything is fine. So I'm going to reset the admin theme to garland and not default. So now it, everything is back. And LHS theme is now the default theme. Um, Zen theme is also enabled, but LHS is enabled and it's a default. So now we are looking at the home page and the home page looks like it has no no styles what whatsoever. So this is setting up um, the basic platform before you can start developing your own theme. Any questions on this? Okay. So to develop our theme, we are going to do three things. The first is we'll copy the CSS file of LHS Club website and we'll update the .info file uh, to use this new CSS file. The second thing is the CSS file will have references to a lot of images in it. So we are going to grab those individual images and populate the theme folder. And finally, we are going to edit the page.tpl.php file and maybe a few other TPL PHP files 
to give our page the same look as the LHS club site. So I used Firebug, identified what the style sheet is being used. It is chess.css file. I opened the link in a new page and basically I'm saving the whole uh, CSS file into the LHS theme folder um, and I'm calling it LHS.CSS. So now we have grabbed the CSS file from the chess website. Next, we are going to edit the .info file for the theme called lhs.info. And we will add one line that says, please use lhs.css uh, style sheet also, in addition to everything else that you're using. And that is done by you know, going to the bottom and there are lots of .css files being used. I just copied one of them and added lhs.css. I was careful to add it at the very, very end because um, the first one gets applied first, followed but the second one supersedes the first one, overwrites it. The third one overwrites the first and the second and so on. So if yours is the last, then that will be applied, definitely. So, so, so far all we have done is copied the CSS, but we have not copied any images or anything else. So we are going to refresh the home page and see how it looks. And since we edited the .info file, we'll need to refresh the themes by you know, going to admin, uh, settings, themes, and then hit you know, save everything. So when I refresh the home page, um, it looks a little bit different. It has some background now, but none of those beautiful images are present yet. And those will come after we uh, download the specific images. So in CSS file, there are a lot of references to images. And what we are going to do now is something very tedious. Go through the CSS file one line at a time, identify if there's an image, and then download it and put it into um, the images folder within our theme. So I have edited the, I'm looking at the CSS file, lhs.css that we just downloaded, and searching for the word URL. And wherever it appears, there's a URL for the actual image, such as you know images slash content bg.gif or bg2.gif. I'm making note of all those in a separate file. And basically, I'm identifying all the images that this CSS file is referencing. So this is images bar two or jpg bar or jpg and there are a few more bar and bar two that we are going to skip over but bar bg hover and maybe a few more so now we have a list of all the all the images that we want to grab but what is the url for uh, for us to grab those So to identify the URL, we go back to the um, to the Los Angeles Chess Club website, and then uh, use Firebug to help us locate the actual URL. So I do a right click on an image, do an inspect element, um, and I see what the URL is. So the URL is something like 
lhsclub.com slash uh, some such thing sites all themes chess images bar.jpg so that's the URL for one of the images we can make a educated guess that all the other images will reside in somewhat similar location and if you are lucky then it is there and we are able to grab if you are unlucky then we hunt for that specific image um, again so I'm just going to copy the the main path and then prepend it to all the images and then I'm going to grab um, each image one at a time and then save it into um, images folder so here I'm grabbing content hyphen bg dot gif this URL I'll put it into uh, Mozilla Firefox and then do a file save as So this is the image. We can't prepend. really say. Sorry. Oh, or just prepend w get to each line. So w get, I'm assuming means you're working on Unix, but what if you're not working on Unix? So I thought of doing that, and I personally always put all the w gets together and in one big file and execute them in a batch. So that's a very useful technique if you're working on Unix. How many of you are working on Unix here? And how many of you are working on Windows? Okay, anyone on Mac? So guys who are working on Mac are working on Unix. So, so I'm not going to download every image, I mean, show everything here. You have to just assume that all the images have been downloaded. So I'm skipping to the last one, I guess. And so now, hopefully, um, there will be some changes in in what we are going to see. Yes, no. In the the home page would be different after all this. At least I thought it would be different. But when I refreshed, nothing was different. It just looked the same. Why is that? We have downloaded the CSS, we have downloaded the images, but the page continues to look like the way it was when we had just the CSS. So any ideas why it's not doing it? Image references are wrong. I'm sorry? The image references could be wrong. Uh, image references could be wrong, but we believe it is correct because Browser cache is possibility. You may have to, you know, refresh, empty the cache. But the main thing that I was trying to get at is um, you need to have appropriate HTML. So you need to match the HTML of your page to the HTML of the Los Angeles Chess Club page. Not the content of it, but all the tags: the H1, H2, div, ID, the class. So those things need to be similar, and that's what theming does. Um, so we are going to do that now. So we will start um, theming. We will not theme the whole site, but we will just begin with it and get a sort of idea of how to do it. So we will start um, with the element that is right after the body tag in HTML. So um, I just, I'm looking at the source. So after body, uh, it has uh, some text that I'm copying out. And this is our page and our page's source. Uh, after body, it has some piece of code that I'm going to copy and put it else, elsewhere. 
and we are going to do a comparison of uh, the first three lines or a few lines after that. So the original is LHS Club website. Our site is the one that we are developing right now. So in LA Chess Club website, after the body, there is something called div ID page wrapper, uh, div ID page header slash div, and it goes on. Whereas in our side, um, that part does not exist. The, the first two lines. So we are going to add that. Um, yeah. So, so clearly we are missing that extra thing and um, we are going to uh, add it from uh, zen's page.tpl.php. We are going to copy that to LHS folder and then edit that. So within Zen, there is a folder called templates. And in that folder, there is a page called page.tpl.php. We are going to copy that and put it in um, LHS slash templates folder. We are now editing that. Don't edit it with Notepad. WordPad is better. It understands the Unix uh, new line characters. And we are going to now edit page.tpl.php. We are going to hunt for the body. So body is right there. We added um, div id equal to page wrapper and div id equal to page header just now. And uh, since we added a div tag and we have not closed it, we are going to the bottom and then um, you know, just before the end of body um, add slash div. This is just to have a completely consistent HTML. So now when we um, uh, refresh the theme and load the home page, since we added a new file, new template file, we need to refresh the theme. And um, the way I do it is I just go to themes folder and then save configuration again. So now after I refresh, I see some extra um, elements that look like the original uh, LHS club. So this is not completely done. We have to modify page.tpl.php extensively. We have to sculpt it, adding one tag at a time, one class, one ID. We have to slowly build it up. But this is a general principle. And any questions? That's all we are going to do with uh, this section. Done? Rain, how much time do we have? Oh, you're giving us your time, so you're going to Okay, what is the time now? It's you're, you're a two-hour hour session. Um, my two-hour session was made one-hour session, I believe. Well, uh, you, if you want more time, you have that. There is another session scheduled in here. Is anybody waiting for that? Um, so I was going to do form API uh, and I will just do it. So forms is something that, why is it not found? Oops. For some reason, I'm not able to do form API. So maybe I'll do form API later. And for now, I'll give a quick demonstration of uh, PopQuizBiz website. So, so in this website, um, you can take quizzes, make quizzes. Uh, 
So for instance, you could take a quiz based on a book. And um, so I'm just going to give a quick demo of one of the quizzes. So I will not take the whole quiz, but I just wanted to show you that um, it is possible to um, take a quiz and it looks in certain way and out of the box quiz module provides you a different interface and I will show you that interface also and um, I can talk about how I constructed this different interface. So here is a um, question. You have four choices. You can choose one of the choice and say submit answer. So when you do that, it shows you um, how other people um, answered, what percentage took one answer, what percentage took another answer. The other thing you could do is have a 50-50. So that will take off two choices from your four uh, options. And then you can pick one of the answers. And the last thing that I wanted to show you is there's a search function where um, you could actually search for search the internet and see the results in in your site. So I could hit the search button, and um, so these are the Google search results, but they are being presented on your site. Um, the advertisements surrounding our AdSense for content of Google. And I could search any word. Drupal Camp LA. And look at the results that come up. And I'll go back to quiz. So this is um, the quiz taking interface that I developed, what you get out of the box is um, the following interface. There's a question. And there are four choices. Um, I added Wolfram Alpha and Google search, but <coughs> they don't come out of the box. But when I hit the next button, what it shows me is the next question directly. There is no intermediate page. So my client wanted an intermediate page. That was his requirement. So here's a module that does everything that the client expected out of a quiz module, but had this one specific requirement that um, I had to use extensive forms API to, um, to generate. And let's see. And my client also asked me to mention one one more thing, which is that if you create a new account and choose your uh, affiliation to be Drupal. then whatever money that uh, PopQuizWiz generates uh, because of the traffic that you gave to the site, uh, we will donate that money to LA Drupal. So um, that was the last thing I wanted to mention. Thank you very much. And do you have any questions? No? We're all done. Thank you, guys.